Thank you all for joining us for the second session to talk about the money, um, which uh, Ms. Rose uh, Cosibinha really primed for us in the first session. Um, I will pass to uh, Director General Amy Pope right now for some framing remarks to get us started. This is the topic that everybody cares most about. Right. Ultimately, it's how do we fund the work that we want to do? So I am very, very pleased that we have convened um, our colleagues who've served as steering committee members in the past and those who currently sit on our steering committee. And they're going to share with you their views on the fund itself, how it's being used, the health of the fund and its future direction. And then really importantly, we want to make sure we have a bit of time to hear from you because we want to know, is the fund doing what it's intended? How do we ensure that it meets the people we're trying to serve and how can we do it better? Um, so to help inform our discussion, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on what we've been up to since we last met um, as the network and where we should go in the future. So a couple of details are found on a brochure, which I think is on your desk if you're here in person. Um, great. And if you are not in person, then that will be posted online so you can take a look at it. But just to remind you, the fund is first and foremost our capacity building mechanism. It is at the center of uh, when we talk about partnership, it is the way that we enable partnership at a very, very practical level. And second, the fund is growing. So, uh, you know, let me be clear. It has a lot of room to grow more. So please, no one leave this room thinking that we've done all the fundraising that needs to happen. But we have seen a steady year-on-year -year increase. And that's really thanks to all of you um, and some donors who've been w really willing to jump in. And by the way, across multiple income levels, this is not just our traditional donors. What we love about the fund is that it is an investment driven by many many, many of our uh, champions. Third, we're starting to see impact on the ground. Now, we know um, these are never immediate impacts, and we need to measure it <laughs> over time and um, assess what's working and what's not working. But the first generation of programming is now being realized. And fourth, and importantly, and I know that you all are feeling this every single day, is that we actually have capacity to do so much more work. And so we're ready to go as soon as that money is there. So let's talk about how we can grow the fund and the direction that it needs to go. I mean, first and foremost, the fund is really about innovation. Um, everybody here in this room, when we're talking about the fund, is a trailblazer. It's not just me. It's not just IOM. It's not, certainly not the UN family, but it's this collective group of people who are really looking for ways to be more transparent, to be more inclusive, to be more effective, and to, to look at how we do that in partnership with one another. We are the very, very first fund to introduce a human rights marker. We're the very first fund to have a child sensitivity marker and the first one to have one on gender. We also, not the first, but it joined our one on gender. We also are looking very specifically about how we improve our engagement with civil society, with migrants themselves, and the communities where migrants are living. And that's a really important area of growth because that is what we are hearing as we speak to stakeholders around the world. That's the DNA, right? It's the innovation. We're trying new things. We're looking at the issue in new ways. And that is critical, which I know is not necessarily in the DNA of all of our member states or bureaucratic institutions, but it is critical that we maintain that sense of innovation, that sense of um, uh, trying out new things in order to figure out what will work. Second, and I just want to reiterate this, this is the second broadest donor fund of all UN global development Hold funds. And that's really important to us because this is a way to move away from a traditional narrative that a few countries determine the progress of the work, especially on migration. And so I really want to encourage those of you um, who are representing countries that are maybe not a usual donor to think about how you're government can be part of this fund. You don't need to have a lot of resources. Every little bit counts. But what's important to us is that it gives everybody some buy-in to the, the way the fund is used. Now, the next thing that's important is that it's growing. So in 2023, we launched nine new joint programs, and that is the highest number of any year since the fund began. 
And it brings together the total number of programs to 21. So covering all <clears throat> thematic areas and regions of the world. One of the rationales of our pooled funds is that we bring this very clunky UN system together and to make sure that we're reaching non-UN partners. So we have 15 different UN entities and a wide range of national and regional partners who are working together. And this did not happen before. So you all will know um, member states and UN agencies alike we often um, find ourselves competing for funding. So it is very helpful to have mechanisms that force us to work together in order to get the funding. And that is what the MPDF does. <clears throat> so in slightly over three years of operations, we are working across the whole range of the GCM objectives. We are benefiting the lives of real people in all regions of the world. And we've been doing that, by the way, despite the impact of COVID-19, the constraints on budget, the um, every other challenge that we have seen thrown our way. So I want us to be really proud of what we've accomplished so far and to recognize that that has not been easy. But ultimately, it's not about um, those numbers. It's about what is our impact and how we're making a difference. And what I want to say is we're seeing results. Now, the thing about innovation is that not every investment will see the same level of results. And we cannot be afraid to admit that something isn't working, right? We don't want to just invest in the sure thing. We want to invest in truly innovative ideas. Yeah. But of the six of the 21 programs that were concluded in 2023, all of them have demonstrated results. And, you know, some of the highlights are things like supporting families who are left behind in Taj Tajikistan. So women who are in extremely vulnerable situations, um, you know, working in a mushroom cultivation program. And through that program, they receive financial literacy training and now can provide for their family. Or in Santiago de Chile and Mexico City, we are supporting the integration, the socioeconomic integration of migrants and refugees. Um, and 1,200 migrants were certified in specific job-related skills. And that program is now spreading to other countries, to Argentina, to Brazil, to Colombia. In East Africa, in the EGAD region, we are developing data-based climate change adaptation plans and helping to implement green economy community interventions. And we're seeing in this particular case, the um, this is, these are folks who are impacted by climate displacement in Somalia, and they're taking plastic waste and they're transforming it into solar energy related skills. So it's very, very practical. It's very local. It's driven by communities. And ultimately, that's the kind of impact that we need to multiply around the world if we're really going to change outcomes here. Now, when it comes down to the money. Um, we have some good news to tell. We reached our funding target of $20 million um, for 2023. And this was not a given. I promise you, I was going around with my cup out at the end of the year because we were so, so close. It was really thanks to so many donors who came together kind of scraping the money from behind the couch cushions and um, pulling together their funds. But frankly, 20 million, while it's impressive and I'm deeply grateful to our donors who made that possible, that is just a drop in the bucket, right? So let's think bigger than that. Let's think broader. And frankly, I'm going to ask you for some money because that's how we're going to get this done. So, and, you know, the reason why we need the money is because we're getting really innovative proposals from countries and partners around the world. 99 countries and regions have submitted proposals. More have coming in. We've already identified 33 joint programs as relevant and promising that are currently in the pipeline. And we know that because we hear from partners around the world that there are more under development. And I'd like to put this out there. This is not in my talking point, so hopefully it doesn't make somebody crazy that I'm saying it. I would like our, to ask our donors to look at how we fund civil society, because ultimately, if we're going to get access to the communities who are most in need, we cannot have restrictions on funding for the, the persons who actually provide many of those services. So this year, we're asking for a record $25 million, but we all know $25 million is easily attainable. But we need a commitment from all of you, of our donors, um, 
big, small, somewhere in between. And if you're not a donor, um, then nudge the donors next to you and make them feel really guilty until they contribute that money. Um, is that our fundraising strategy, by the way? I, th I think that works. Okay. So, <laughs> so we have a couple of initiatives um, beyond guilt to increase our donor base. Number one, a joint contr contribution initiative. So we will we are looking, this is literally what I mean, establishing a partnership between an existing donor and a new one. So if you are a donor, we're asking you to identify others who might join you and bring them along with you um, to become part of the MPTF. Second, we want to encourage private sector engagement. So we will allow earmarking for private sector entities on a pilot basis. We're going to have a strict set of rules, so we make sure we safeguard the decision-making role of our steering committee and the 360-degree nature of the compact. But we know that a lot of private sector entities are asking for it. So that's this year. Where are we going next? First, we're beginning the second cycle of our GCM review. So we want, we must make this process more inclusive and more participatory. The fund can help us do that as it has dedicated funding windows. So contributions, for example, from the Robert Bosch Foundation and the United Methodist Committee on Relief enabled the active participation of 46 different stakeholders from regions across the world for the IMRF. And now we are asking our member states to step in and donate to ensure that everybody can get to the table. That is how we create a, an inclusive response that engages all of our stakeholders. We are also very committed to this 360 degree nature of the compact, but we do know there are some key issues and some key gaps. Those identified by the steering committee include the impact of climate change on human mobility. We are seeing this around the world in people who are displaced, people who cannot find a livelihood, whose homes are destroyed, whose future is destroyed because of climate change. So we recognize that is an area where we need to provide additional programming. Second, we need to improve migrants' access to healthcare. If there is one lesson we learned from the COVID-19 pandemic, is that we cannot discriminate against health outcomes, that COVID and other diseases do not discriminate. So as a community, we need to address the health care needs of all people. Three, we need to double down on our efforts to prevent the loss of migrant lives, to protect children, and to ensure really drive this concept of regional or multicultural, multi-country programming. Because Migration by its nature is occurring across borders, and we need to build that into to the work that the fund is supporting. We also need to make sure that the money can do more than one thing, right? So migration and climate change um, overlap. And as we see these challenges develop, new means of supporting them will emerge. We saw this in COP28. We're very, very pleased to see the establishment of the loss and damage fund and the recognition that climate mobility needs to be part of that fund. There's another fund that is going to be launched or has just been launched called the Internal Displacement Solutions Fund. These are distinct issues, but they overlap. So it's extremely incumbent upon all of us. Um, and I know that our donors will echo this, that we consider how we maximize these different funding angles for good. How do we make the best use of money that's out there? How do we avoid duplication? How do we focus on those who are most in need? And finally, we need to expand our community. This is not a question of funding alone, but we need to make sure that the fund has meaning for everyone, not just in this consultative forum. That's because of the environment that we are facing. We spoke earlier about the importance of narrative. We've recognized already that the world is at a pivotal moment, particularly as half of the world is going to vote. We know that the issue of migration is one of the topics that is touching everybody around the world, um, wherever you might sit. So we need to change the narrative as, as the panel discussed in the last session to demonstrate how migration can be used as a force for good. We know that we can do that through this community. We know that we can do that through this fund. We know that we can do that through the champions who are in this room um, and the people that we're serving every single day. So I just want to say thank you and leave you with a bit of um, uh, 
uh, inspiration, really, that that this is not just about a $25 million fund. This is about fundamentally changing the way we work and the way we ensure that we're meeting sustainable development goals that really leave no one behind. So no pressure, but a little pressure. <laughs> Thank you, Director General Pope, um, for again coming full circle from the beginning of the morning, which was a warm invitation to really own our agency in this room, both as individuals and as representatives of different organizations and, and member states. Uh, as we've heard, the Migration Multipartner Trust Fund is transforming and, quite frankly, enabling a whole of society and and whole of government uh, approach to um, not just problem solving around migration, but also maximizing its promise. So today's esteemed panelists will be providing an update on these efforts and highlighting some of these innovations and opportunities uh, for further collective action. Um, and to not delay, I'd like to turn to our first panelists, uh, Mr. Abdallah Boutagard, Deputy Permanent Representative of the Permanent Mission of the Kingdom of Morocco. Um, Mr. Boutagard, your country is one of, one of the countries that's contributed, contributed financially to the fund. Um, and you've also served on the fund steering committee. Can you please share more of your thoughts on this? Merci, Madame la Moderatrice. Thank you, uh, Ms. Is Chair. Dear colleagues, dear uh, Secretary General, dear uh, Director General, I would first uh, say thank you to the Director General to pay tribute to her leadership, her vision to improve governance as a whole, but also for her action for a stronger collaboration and to improve the use of resources within the organization. This being said, I also wanted to echo my joy to take part to this fifth annual meeting of the UN Network on Migration. We are focusing on the fund to which we do deeply contribute. We want to strengthen these funds and we also want there with to contribute to the implementation of the Global Compact. As reminded during the meeting that was organized in Rabat in 2022, the pledges of the Champions Country need to be worded as innovative, they need also to dwell on good practices and on financial contributions. The approach that was put in place by Morocco was dual, multilateral, insisting on the role of the funds to support the global compact and the objectives as reminded during the rabbit meeting, but we also have an individual approach. We do contribute, tangibly contribute to our partners, such as Germany. The joint announcement, the recent joint announcement was meant as a strong message of cooperation and multilateralism in full alignment with the words of the Compact of Marrakesh. It is in this regard an innovative approach of migration. Morocco and Germany have already strongly contributed to these question co presiding in 2019, the Global Forum on Migration and Development, to which we participated and to which we uh, also um, contributed last week. The objective 23 of the Global Compact this states that this fund is an international cooperation tool. It enables the strengthening of cooperation and partnership for safe, orderly and regular migration. Based on that spirit and on that mindset, we are doing different things. First, in terms of governance, we are working with the UN and different stakeholders. Second, uh, 
the operation in the 21 funded programs, five are plurinational and multinational. And third, it's financing, knowing that 21 countries are contributing to this fund as of this day, uh, as to this day. Regarding this fund, Morocco recognizes that it is crucial and paramount that the programs are strengthened or better financed because migration is a phenomenon that knows no border. And it is also normal for it to be reflected in the implemented programs. We want it to also be, do, be done in a sustainable way and to be strengthened. We also want to promote the joint contributions. The funds promotes the mobilization of resources and we want to count on all the associated countries to do what Morocco did with Germany very recently. We are convinced that this fund with the Global Compact will remain a key tool for the implementation of the Global Compact. Thank you and I will have to leave the room unfortunately for another meeting but thank you very much once again. Thank you. That was perfectly on time and you made my life easier after trying to play catch up from that coffee break. Um, and I wish you safe travels to your next meetings. Uh, well, we've just heard about the cooperation between states and multi-country approaches that are enabled by the fund. And now I'd like to turn to Ms. Carolina Gotardo, Executive Director of the International Detention Coalition, to share more about uh, cooperation with civil society through a different lens. Um, Ms. Gotardo, from this perspective, uh, what do you see as the long-term success of the fund? And how do you see uh, opportunities for more meaningful engagement, having served on the steering committee of the fund as well? Thank you, Christine. Um, and good morning um, to everyone and good afternoon to those online. Buenos días y buenas tardes a todas y todos. Um, and it's, I'm, I'm, I'm particularly pleased to be part of this panel, which is very meaningful to me, um, as I have been part of the steering committee since 2021. And now this term has come to an end. And this has been a quite uh, a role that I have taken very seriously, and it has been rewarding if challenging at times. Um, the MPTF has a very crucial or a very important role to play as a mechanism that can enable the realization of the GCM objectives and the guiding principles on the ground, considering those very different local and national realities. And if well targeted, the MPTF can actually achieve a change in migrant, in migrant lives. And let's, let's be clear about this. So let's remember that a meaningful and positive change in migrant lives should be what we're aiming for. Um, and it, it's, it's, it should be really the main purpose of every single project of the MPTF. And more than that, it should be the main purpose of any GCM implementation effort if we want our, our, uh, our efforts to be, to be uh, meaningful in, in one, way, one way or another. As part of this steering committee, I have witnessed the professionalism of the, of the work of the uh, fund management unit and the way the recommendations on the funding is done that is based on the, on the quality of the projects and on the technicalities of the, of the technical uh, quali quality of the different uh, projects and also trying to achieve what is a geographic and a, and a kind of thematic balance. And I have to say that decisions have not always been easy. And the reason is that there have been quite a number of very good projects, but as was mentioned before, the amount of funding is not, ne not necessarily enough, uh, or it's a drop in the ocean for what needs to be done in terms of, uh, of, in terms of good projects there. So this is also a call to the state and the fund, states and the funders in the room to invest on this in, in kind of a meaningful way. And also particularly considering the role of civil society. Um, the composition of the steering committee by itself is, includes the diversity of different stakeholders like civil society, the private sector, um, and, and uh, uh, local authorities and others. And there is equal voting rights within the steering committee. So in, in terms of governance, it kind of works quite well. 
And uh, for IDC, during our time uh, as part of the steering committee, our role has been really about advocating for the for what it is the truth and meaningful participation of civil society, including migrant migrant um, organization in projects and initiatives. And I, I do have to say that there is still a long way to go on this on, in this sense, but there has been some progress. And one of the things that I'm particularly pleased with is the production of the guidance for civil society for civil society participation uh, that is trying to pursue the whole of um, society approach which is one of the crucial guiding principles of the of the GCM I do believe that there is no meaningful or true impact of the GCM without the crucial involvement of civil society, migrant-led organizations, and women organizations in GCM implementation. And they need to be involved in each and every of the programs of the MPTF. And this needs to be also through meaningful funding. And I was very pleased to hear Amy before talking about this. I, I kind of love that off the record <laughs> comment. Um, to achieve change at national and local levels, we need multiple actors that are engaged in different ways because each of those actors have different value added and different um, levels of access, etc. And this needs to be done in a non-tokenistic manner. Um, uh, and migrant-led organizations and civil society are, are, we know that they are often, they are doing this work on the ground. They are the one closest to the migrants. So I have a question to, for you, and is how could a project be developed without the meaningful engagement of them and still be effective? I, I just don't think it, it can. Um, taking this into account, I, I have been um, I'm looking at the, guide, at, at the guidance and thinking about what are the meaningful elements or, or the minimum elements for the civil society engagement. I can think of, of, of a few. And the first one is what I will call the, minimum, the meaningful and non-tokenistic participation. And this implies full involvement of civil society and migrant communities in the co-creation of projects. This doesn't mean including the name of the NGOs in the project or picking the box because the guidance says so or because this will enhance funding prospects. It means co-creation. That's the important word. Co-creation with civil society. Timelineness is another important factor, and it means involvement from the beginning of the project, from planning stages, and not as an afterthought. And this means being part of the whole project cycle, planning, implementation, and monitoring. The, uh, probably one of the most important uh, thoughts is the actual transfer of funds. Civil society is one of the most meaningful stakeholders uh, in, the, in migration in general. We are actually able to do a lot with very little. We are close to the ground and motivated by change on the ground and by the needs of migrants. But one of our like paralyzing factors for civil society is lack of funding. I mean, civil society could do much more if we actually had the resources to do so, uh, especially at the, at the local and national levels. And one of the crucial points is we can't do our work for free because this is not sustainable. And the MPTF needs to ensure that CSOs are not only part of projects, but that actual funds are transferred to the CSOs. Um, so mentioning the CSOs without providing the financial support or supporting them financially is actually tokenistic, um, and no UN agencies should, should be involved in this type of practice. Um, the third, uh, the fourth element is, is the governance structure. And this means having a seat on the table, having a seat on the table as part of the governance mechanisms for every project of the, of the MPTF, um, and having a say in the direction and implementation. And finally, is that this participation of civil society and migrant led organizations should follow a gender responsive, a child sensitive and an intersectional approach because this truly reflects the richness of migrants and their diverse identities and of civil society as a whole as well. So in conclusion, the MPTF is making an effort to enhance the whole of society approach um, with the development of these guidance notes. And this is certainly a step in the right direction, but there is still a long way to go. And now what we need to ensure is that the guidance is implemented in practice. And we need to actually monitor how much funding is getting to civil society from these projects. There need to be mechanisms to be able to monitor this and to enhance that, enhance that, that direct transfer of money. 
prioritizing the whole of society approach and including that all MPTF projects meaningfully include man migrants communities and the civil society will enhance this potential of the GCM and the guiding principles and will create this change on the ground that I was talking about and positively impact migrant lives. And it's this change of the ground in, in the lives of the migrants what will determine whether we are have been, whether we have been successful or we are wasting our efforts. So thank you very much um, again. Thank you, Ms. Cotardo, for your candor. Uh, rarely uh, have I seen funding mechanisms when we're bidding for, for more resource, more mobilization uh, to be given a path into what can be improved, but also um, to really celebrate some of those early successes and structures that can support this whole of society approach. So we've now heard about engagement, more meaningful engagement with civil society, and, and we also heard about more cooperation and multi-country approaches to the fund. And now uh, I'd like to turn to His Excellency Fernando Israel Espinosa Olivera, Deputy per Permanent Representative of the Permanent Mission of Mexico to the United Nations Office, uh, to speak more about private sector engagement. So slowly we're starting to build a roadmap of the many different sectors that we can call into this immense and inspiring mission. Uh, Ambassador Olivera, please. Gracias, señora Delgado, por concederme el uso Thank de you palabra. very much, Madam Delegate, for giving me the floor. Good afternoon, good morning, Madam DG Pope, distinguished colleagues. I would like to warmly Thank you for inviting me to take part in this fourth consulting meeting of the MPTF. For us, the fund is an innovative mechanism, quite unique within the UN system, with the aim to fund projects to improve migration at the international level. Since its conception in 2019, the forum has raised the interest both of donors and member states that have found in it a useful tool to respond to migration-related the challenges and this shows in more than 160 projects received by the projects from 100 countries as well as in sustained capitalization levels up to 60 million dollars in four years mexico is committed with the fund not only have we contributed annually to the fund but also we have been members of the board of directors, which has given us the opportunity to work in partnership with France and civil society organizations like the International Coalition Against Detentions to work for high quality projects reflecting the priorities and needs of origin, transit and destination countries and allow us to tackle migration from a 360 degrees promoted in the Pact of Marrakesh, as one of our dear speakers mentioned in one of the presentations. Nonetheless, and besides the steps forward and the strength of the fund, it's undeniable that, that the international migration scenario is becoming more and more complex. We are faced against challenges that will worsen in the next decades, such as the potential increase in transnational migration through international borders as a result of natural disasters and the negative impacts of climate change, amongst others. As a result of the previous we have to take a different approach on migration. The current approach has proven to be inefficient. We need to foster more relevant opportunities for a safe and regular migration to prevent irregular migration and tackle root causes of migration. Achieving positive outcomes will require us of merging our efforts based on alliances with a key role led by the private sector as donors and potential employers of migrants up to date. The fund has benefited of entities from the private sector, which we applaud. Nonetheless, according to recent figures, the participation of the private sector in the fund and other UN mechanisms is very limited. 3.6 billion dollars have been channeled by the system since 2021 and 
to 2022, and only 0.5% of the funding corresponds to the private sector, $19 million. We have to acknowledge the challenge, and last year, the members of the board of the fund on the grounds of an independent assessment decided to promote a code of conduct to foster the private sector participation to the fund. And we labeled the contributions according to areas of interest without undermining the 360 degrees of the fund. We are convinced that the private sector has a key interest in contributing to reinforcing migration governance, the international changes that are taking place or that are happening today result in vacancies, 30 million vacancies in the most developed countries in the world, which entails important economic losses up to $1.3 billion. And this is an indicator of to what extent companies would benefit of having more certainty in migration patterns. In Mexico, we are working towards a reinforced participation of the private sector in the migration and refuge agenda. We have been working with the UNHR and more than 500 companies in Mexico in promoting opportunities, labor opportunities for refugees. In the framework of this program, which has benefited more than 3,000 people, have obtained retention rates of up to 90% refugees benefit of uh, gaining self-sufficiency and companies benefit of the human capital that refugees contribute. We are working in partnership with IOM in a similar project to promote channels for safe and orderly migration for mig migrants in distress with the participation of the private sector and in a logic that engage countries of origin, transit, and destination. In the case of Mexico, it is an immense opportunity for companies due to the very high demand of talent in sectors such as agriculture, health, hospitality, but also technology, semiconductors, and other sectors that have benefit of outsourcing in international value chains. Ladies and gentlemen, the previous examples prove that there are real tangible areas of opportunity to reinforce the participation of the private sector in migration governance and to ensure their participation to the fund. We are sure that a better governance of migration will benefit us all and will contribute to the attainment of the SDGs. I would like to once again thank you for having invited me. Thank you very much, Ambassador Espinosa. I will keep my remarks very short, but I just want to draft um, everything that you've heard, this roadmap of multi-country partnerships, civil society engagement, and innovative ways to really open up the space with the private sector. I'd now finally like to turn to someone that wears two hats, the hat of a donor representative on the steering committee, but also the hat of the chair of the Global Forum on Migration and Development, which was held very successfully just last week. Uh, I'd like to introduce Her Excellency Caroline Duma, representative of the French presidency of the Global Forum on Migration and Development. So you have the tough job of telling us about the funds from this double perspective. Well, Madame la Directrice Générale, dear DG, dear DG, ambassadors, colleagues, dear leaders of the different platforms, and dear participants uh, du forum, allow me to switch back to French. Tout d'abord, merci uh, de ce temps. First of all. Thank you uh, for giving me the floor. And I will use this opportunity to speak on behalf of France. Firstly, about France's commitment to the MPTF, but secondly, about our involvement alongside many other partners as chair of the Global Forum on um, Migration and Development. France is the fifth largest donor of the MPTF and is pleased to sit as a member of the steering committee, which enables us to really 
bear witness to the effectiveness of the governance mechanisms put in place. And this has already been underlined by previous uh, speakers. One of the MPTF strengths lies in the decision-making process that involves not only governments, but also development agencies, civil society, the private sector, maybe not enough, as previous speakers have emphasized, I would also like to highlight the quality, quality of work carried out by the fund's management unit to ensure that the fund remains faithful to the objectives of the GSCM and to the highly relevant guidelines set by the steering committee. The fund is placing increasing emphasis on climate issues and their impact on human mobility. 28% of the financing committed by the MPTF since its creation has gone to projects integrating climate dimension. This is a sign, a sign of the growing need to take climate mobility into account and this proportion will reach 40% of the projects in 2023. Even if the funds has as an objective to address all the priorities of the global compact, this uh, thematic shift is necessary. As many players emphasize today, internal displacements and migratory shifts are now increasingly inseparable from effects of climate change and are factors in worsening global inequalities, making it even more urgent to consolidate safer, regular and orderly migration routes. This is also why France has made the link between climate and human mobility the main theme of the French presidency of the Global Forum on Migration and Development, which held its 14th summit last week in Geneva, in this same building. I'd like to say a few words about the work we carried out during this meeting. The French presidency of the GFMD lasted almost two years, during which our country led various meetings, workshops, roundtables, thanks to the commitment of all GFMD players, including international organizations, including IOM, civil society, private sector, local governance, youth representatives, and the support, of course, of the Secretariat. And I would like here to express my warmest thanks once again to the Secretariat. Our primary objective was to foster a process and a summit that would contribute to both the sustainable development goals and those of the uh, GCM by strengthening innovative partnerships in migration and development in line with resolution 7395 and ahead of the future summit. We also discussed the uh, significance of human mobility as a leverage for sustainable development. After an initial report uh, prepared for the uh, last uh, high-level political forum focused on the SDG 6, access to water, 7, access to clean energy, 9, promotion of resilience. The next report will focus on goals 1, eradicate poverty, goal 2, eradicate hunger, ensure food security, Goal 13, combat climate change and its impacts. Goal 16, promote peace and ensure access to justice for all. Goal 17, strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. With regards to the GCM, we worked on goals five, accessible channels for regular migration, 16, integration and social cohesion, 17, eliminating discrimination and encouraging change, 18, skills, 19, the contribution of migration and diasporas to the sustainable development of all countries. France is also committed to make this forum a long-term 
a long-term forum, forward-looking, promoting action, sharing best practice, and building global joint sustainable uh, around six uh, thematic priorities. The first one here, and that's the main theme of the French presidency, the impact of climate change on human mobility. So this first priority was the subject of a dedicated high-level panel and looks uh, to set as a permanent feature of the GFMD's work. Five other themes were also discussed in depth in different roundtables, amongst those rights and migration, diasporas and economic, social and cultural development, labor migration and the social and economic inclusion of migrants, culture and uh, the narrative on migration, and the multi-level governance of migration. We've worked with a team of uh, multidisciplinary rapporteurs from Mexico, a champion of the Global Compact, a representative of the private sector mechanism, and another from civil society. You will actually hear, hear from these rapporteurs in the coming hours, and they will be able to present the initial conclusions from the forum at three levels. How to make the most of migration's development potential, how to protect the rights of migrants and save lives, and what is the future of migration. The aim of this work is to highlight the initiatives, practices, policies collected during this presidency, to feed into the uh, regional reviews of the Global Compact that will start in March and create synergies to benefit all states and governments and or other partners of the forum. This process of seeking kind of a concrete guidelines and recommendation is fully in line with the MPTF approach and is intended to provide a food for thought for the steering committee. So all this has been really the outcome of a fascinating work for the French presidency team. Thank you again for allowing me to report on this work. As you know, the French presidency of the GFMD is coming to an end, but we will remain mobilized alongside the new Colombian presidency to whom we uh, wish every success. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador Dumas. Uh, and apologies, everyone. We are running late, so I, if it's okay, we might keep you from your lunch for 15 minutes. We apologize for the coffee line earlier. Uh, and thank you to all of our esteemed panelists for highlighting both the quality of the work, the innovation behind this uh, governance model and um, and the push and, and path towards broadening and bolstering opportunity um, and transforming really the way of, of, of working for this space. I'd now like to turn to um, some speakers that we have queued up. Unfortunately, we have quite a long queue. We are doing our best to accommodate everyone. As I turn to you, please keep your remarks as short as possible. Uh, first, I'd like to turn to the United Kingdom for remarks and questions. Thank you very much, Chair. And thank you, DG Amy Pope and all the panelists for your contributions. DG Jonathan Prentice, let me begin by thanking you for your commitment to and re-energising of the network. The UN Network on Migration is a vital means by which IOM itself is embedded into the wider UN family and beyond. Now, if the Global Compact for Migration is our foundation, the Migration Multipartner Trust Fund is a vital mechanism for driving results as well as underpinning constructive cooperation across network partners. We welcome the publication of the guiding principles on implementation of GCM, including the focus on human rights, children, gender sensitivity, as well as crucial engagement with communities directly affected. In line with the Global Compact for Migration and the SDGs, the UK government is committed to ensuring that global migration is safer and more regular, to reducing irregular and dangerous journeys, protecting lives 
and creating economic growth. When managed safely and effectively, migration can indeed be a powerful mechanism for global development. The UK is particularly pleased that the MPTF is receiving the proper visibility at this year's annual meeting. We are proud to have been the first donor to the MPTF and one of the largest, contributing over $6.2 million, more than 10% of the total since its inception. And I'm pleased to say, following the effective lobbying of the DG, that the UK has recently made a further £1 million contribution, hoping to take the fund over its £20 million target in 2023. We need to make sure... Thank you. <laughs> We need to make sure that countries of origin, transit and destination are properly prepared as the influence of climate change and migration continues to grow so that when it happens, migration can be safe, orderly and regular. And this, so the UK particularly welcomes MPTF's project's focus on the intersection of climate change and migration, as well as the links between gender and migration. Finally, I would like to echo the DG's call on other partners to support the MPTF in 2024, to not only grow the fund, but also to diversify its donor base. Together, we can address the challenges and realise the benefits of global migration, working in partnership with stakeholders present today and many others around the world. Thank you. Thank you. I'd now like to turn to Reverend Jack Amick from Global Ministries of the United Methodist Church. Please. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Reverend Jack Amick, the Director of Global Migration for UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Belief, which is part of the General Board of Global Ministries and the humanitarian organization of the United Methodist Church. Since UMCOR started in 1940, we have had a commitment to alleviating suffering without regard to race and creed, and as such, we've worked closely with refugees, migrants, displaced persons through this 80-plus years of history. In recent times, we got involved in the review process of the Global Compact on Migration um, when it was online, and we noticed... Um, with pleasure that many migrants and migrant organizations were taking part in that process, and we were excited about that. And we began to wonder what would happen when we all came out of that um, bubble and went um, back to meeting in person. Would migrants and migrant-led groups be able to continue to participate because of the costs of assembling and so so forth? And so we provided a donation through the Migration Multi-Partner Trust Fund to encourage and, and support the work of the network in bringing people to um, the forum in 2022 in New York. We have subsequently given another donation that would allow migrant-led and migrant participation in the review process this year in Africa and in other regions in the world. We at UMCOR believe that migrants are people that, just like all of us, that whose dignity needs to be upheld. And by contributing in this way and listening to the voices of migrants, we feel that we can begin to move down that journey. I would also like to echo some things or build on some things that have been said already. Migration is not a crisis. It's not a disaster. It's not an emergency. Migration is just something that's always been a part of who we are. We don't have a migration crisis. We have a crisis of welcome. And so I would encourage all of us, including NGOs, who we often look for money. How can we find resources to do our work? But I would encourage all of us to also give back and to participate in this, this work, because if we, if we pool resources, we can have a greater impact 
on supporting migrants. So thank you to all of you who take the time and energy and resources to walk the journey with migrants. And thank you to the UN Network on Migration and the Multi-Partner Trust Fund for making a significant movement towards that direction. Thank you very much. Thank you, Reverend, for that call to collaborate more deeply and more meaningfully. Uh, I'd now like to turn to Germany for a statement. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, uh, good well, good morning. It's too late probably, but hello to everyone here in the room. Um, so far, Germany has been uh, the largest contributor to the Migration Multi-Partner Trust Fund. And let me perhaps briefly, uh, looking also at, at the time, uh, briefly explain why this has been so and where Germany sees the strengths and values of the fund. The fund puts ownership of partner governments at its center. It has a multi-stakeholder character reflecting the whole of government and the whole of society approach uh, of the global compact on migration. The nexus approach is bringing humanitarian peace and development agencies together within the framework of the fund. The fund is an important laboratory and catalyst to develop and pilot innovative approaches for cooperation in the field of migration. The fund is strengthening a multilateral response to migration and enhances the crucial role of the UN network on migration. And last but not least, the MMPTF is very well administered and managed by the fund management unit. The fund does not only support the implementation of the global compact on migration, but it also implements the GCM in an inclusive manner following the whole of government and whole of society approach. Since its establishment, in 2019, the fund has continuously improved the inclusion of civil society organizations and local actors in project design and implementation, for example, also by developing the guidance note on engagement with civil society migrants and communities uh, during last year. We highly value the most, that most of the projects have implementation agreements with local governments and non-governmental stakeholders. This enables efficient policy making and assures, ensures effective governance. Finally, the fund has contributed to greater coherence in the UN work around, around migration and has helped to make the UN network on migration a reality and stronghold of multilateral migration and development cooperation. It also provides an instrument to promote unity of purpose within the UN system. It has proven to be an important component in the developing in the developing momentum between UN country teams and host countries in the field of migration. And a final word regarding funding and the future perspectives for funding. I'm very happy that the DG and also the Deputy Permanent Representative of Morocco have mentioned the Joint Contribution Initiative. At the beginning of 2023, Germany, together with the Fund Management Unit, had proposed this initiative, uh, which is also uh, called a matching pledge idea for uh, even more diverse and broad funding of the MMPTF. The idea is that by jointly communicating and announcing their contributions to the fund, existing traditional donors will team up with new donors contributing for the first time to the fund. And so on 26th of April last year, Morocco and Germany announced together their contributions to the fund during a small ceremony at IOM headquarters. And with this joint announcement or communication, we wanted to set a precedent for the initiative and we still hope that other donors will follow the example. The idea of the initiative is not only to enhance the financial, but also the political support for the fund and to further strengthen the partnership approach as a key element of the multi-partner migration 
trust fund. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for once again highlighting the joint contribution initiative, which is incredible. Uh, we only have a few minutes left, uh, so I will ask uh, the USA, Denmark, and Afford to be on deck. And please keep your remarks to one minute so that you can all go to lunch and carry on conversing. So please, the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you to the esteemed panelists for the valuable insights from your experiences with the multi-partner trust fund. The United States is proud to provide funding through the fund, and we look forward to joining the MPTF steering committee in 2024, as well as playing a leading role in the 2024 GCM regional reviews. We very much encourage other donors to consider providing funding through the MPTF as a multilateral approach to supporting safe, orderly, and regular migration globally. And to repeat the Director General, every little bit counts. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, DG, for the inspirational introduction and the insightful uh, uh, statements from uh, from the panel. Denmark is proud to be among the top donors to the fund with a total contribution of 6.4 million US dollars. With our last and hitherto biggest con commitment to the fund made only last year because we really believe in the value of the fund and we are also very pleased to be part of the steering committee. From the discussions here, it's no secret that uh, more funding is needed uh, for the fund to be able to fully deliver on the task given through it by member states through the GCM, a task that we are fully uh, confident that the fund is able to deliver on. And as uh, the first uh, project is coming to an end this year, we're also looking very much forward to get a more solid understanding of the impacts of the fund. Just a few uh, key points on why Denmark sees a uh, great value uh, in supporting and engaging in the fund. First of all, it's a key instrument to implement the GCM and its 360 degrees approach. We've heard about the geographic uh, and thematic uh, distribution of, uh, of funding. Further, it has also shown adaptability to new challenges uh, with the inclusion of the climate migration uh, nexus focus, which we're really pleased about. Um, it's also, as was also mentioned previously, a true vehicle to push all actors to work together on this, not least the UN system, which is a key, uh, key priority and, uh, and very important if we, uh, if we want uh, our efforts on migration to succeed. It's a demand driven fund, uh, and it's a well managed fund. The pipeline, uh, is a very uh, clear testimony, uh, to, uh, to that. And it's an inclusive fund. Uh, look at the steering committee where everyone has a seat at, uh, at the table and the broad donor base also, uh, also bears witness to the inclusivity. So in short, Denmark really looks forward to continue our partnership and cooperation with the fund, with its donors within the steering committee and not least with all the beneficiaries, uh, of the fund. And we encourage all both traditional and non-traditional donors and other partners to actively engage in supporting the fund and thereby it's supporting all of us in delivering on the GCM. Thank you. Thank you. Afford, very quickly, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, um, as a member of the UK Stakeholder Forum on GCM, we want to take the opportunity to encourage all states to engage with local and national CSOs and organizations to help to build and implement things on the grassroots as much as possible. Um, we also recognize the limited financial support and also the shrinking space for engagement from the different stakeholders within the setup. We note that the MMPTF um, in its current form is not an appropriate mechanism for financing civil society and non-state actors, but we also encourage states and every partner of the MMPTF to look into other funding opportunities and a diverse way to engage all other stakeholders who are also contributing. The important thing is that every stakeholder really matters 
and only one stakeholder is not enough and that's why we need to actually utilize the multi-partner name of the fund to achieve greater impact for everyone thank you very much thank you thanks to all who have spoken for your remarks. Um, and I apologize again for the delay. I'd like to once again thank our esteemed panelists uh, for this invigorating conversation. And we will resume at 1430. And now without further delay, please go eat. <laughs> thank you all. <laughs>